Well, welcome, 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 welcome. I just marvel at, at the fact that, um, that week after week, so many of you come back and, and it's wonderful. God, God is doing a great thing. So today, let me invite you, not to lunch, but to the museum. Let's go to the museum, okay? And uh, uh, let me ask you this question. Who do you think is, is the, um, the greatest painter of all time? Painters like um, uh, Van Gogh, uh, Michelangelo, Rembrandt, Picasso, Monet, Dali. Um, I'm kind of partial to Rubens. <laughs> okay, all right, bad joke. But uh, I want to invite you because there is a new gallery that, that has opened up at the museum and it has three paintings there by the most incredible painter who ever lived, greater than any of the ones I've already mentioned, and these have been discovered and I want to reveal them to you. So we will see three portraits, okay? We'll see three portraits. So let's go. You and I walk in, walk into the museum, and we go over to the gallery, and up above, it says, uh, paintings by Isaiah. Isaiah. Paintings by Isaiah. So the first one over on our left, uh, you look and, and you, you, you get close and you see that the title is, the title of the painting is uh, The Baby. It's the title of the, it's The Baby. That's what it's called, the painting. And it, 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 he, he makes use of, of uh, darkness, shadows, light, uh, and, and, and somehow he can get movement with his paintings. Uh, this, is, this is remarkable, right? And it starts off uh, on the left, and it's people walking in darkness. And, and you can tell they're people, but they're walking in darkness. They're, they're, they're moving somewhere, but they're walking in darkness. And it, it, it reminded me that, uh, that it was written, the people walking in darkness, people walking in darkness, have seen a great light. Those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. So as you watch this painting, this huge painting, you, you see people walking in darkness towards the light. And the light, now as, as we get closer to the middle of the painting, we see that the light is on a baby. Yes, a baby. Yes. And there, there is a, a baby there. And there are, um, there are animals. And uh, I guess that's the mom and the dad. There's a glow about them. Um, the dad has kind of a, a puzzled look on his face. The mom just radiates you know, like something really, really, really special. And <clears throat> and there are gifts. Uh, let's see what the gifts are. You can see them. Oh, they're labeled frankincense. Frankincense is the first gift. And it, we are told by our guide that the frankincense is there to give an aroma of worship. Frankincense, it was used... In the time of Isaiah, it was used as a as a symbol of worship. Remember, they they, they would they would uh, load up that little thing with with frankincense, and then they would get coals from the altar, and they put it in there, and they go in, and they, they would they would shake it, and and it would fill the room, the the holy place, with 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 the, the smoke, and the smoke would go up as a beautiful fragrance to God. So this baby, this baby is getting frankincense because he is so wonderful. He is God. This baby is God. There have been others that claim to be God, but you can see it, man. You can see it on this baby. And you think, wow, this baby is wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, the Prince of Peace, this baby, what a baby, oh my goodness, but uh, we're, these look like very poor people, 
That, that baby is just wrapped in, I don't know, some kind of rags. But the paintings is beautiful. It's dark in there. You know, there are animals and, and, and the gifts and, 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 and people coming through the darkness to see the baby. And, and so, so they, they, brought, they brought frankincense because, uh, obviously, as the guide will tell us, it, frankincense is an act of worship because this baby is God. And then another gift that's slain that you look at, oh my goodness, these poor people, poverty-stricken people, are given a gift of gold. Gold! And that's because this baby is a king. And you can see something about this baby. There's something that radiates from him, something that he is, he is more than just an ordinary baby. Oh yeah, we all think our babies are beautiful, and they are. But this one, there's something special. You can feel it. There's something in the air. There's a, you can almost hear music. And in the painting, in the background, you can see angels singing and worshiping wow and we read that the government will be on his shoulder this little baby the government of the nations will be upon his shoulders and that this government is not like governments that come and go you know all over the world governments are overthrown and new ones come in even here we have elections every four years and there's a change in in leadership different leader but this baby is different you can see he's around he's going to be around he is here to stay this little baby is here to, to take over he is the king oh but what is that other box you look it's myrrh myrrh for a baby a newborn baby myrrh what is that we're told myrrh is an embalming oil for the dead. What a thing to bring for a, for a baby shower. Embalming oil. Does this mean that's what the shadows are, are about? There's glory on his face. There's peace. There's singing. There's worship. But you can see something about that baby. Oh, Oh, there's a shadow across his forehead in the shape of a cross. This baby is destined to die. He was born to die. Oh, what a painting. We just marvel, takes our breath away. And as our guide leads us over to the center one, now this one's a big painting. Oh my goodness, what is this? It's, what is this? It looks like a, a, a ground beef. What is it? Ground beef with her shadows. You can barely make it out. It's ground beef, yes. But that's in the center. But look, it starts over here on the left. Dark, it's kind of like a forest, maybe a garden. And there's a man. You can make out the silhouette in the darkness. He's, oh my goodness. He's agonizing, agonizing, suffering. He's sweating. What is that? What is that dark? I've never seen tears like that. What is that? I think. I think it's blood. I think it's blood. And follow it. The painting, follow it to the center. Oh, that is not ground beef. Oh, oh, that is not ground beef. It's a man. It's a man. But who would paint such an ugly horrible, repulsive thing. That's the most vile thing I've ever seen. Can, can we look at... Uh, 
It's hard to look at it. There's no beauty or majesty in that face to attract us to him. There's nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. I can see on his face the colors are so expressive. They show that he has been despised and rejected. You can see that this man has been a man of suffering and has been familiar with pain. Yes, he's like the one people turn their face and hide their faces from him. It looks like he was held in the lowest of esteem. That's the look of, on his face. It wasn't ground beef, it's a man. He looks like he is carrying pain that's not his own. It looks like he bore suffering for others. The guy that tells us he is being punished, fully punished by God. God has stricken him and afflicted him. Punished by God. So that's what was happening in the garden. He was going like this. Now I understand because there was a cup there. What was that cup? I asked the guide. He tells us that cup is the wrath of God against the world for everything that anyone has ever done wrong, any evil thought, any bad deed, God's punishment, all the wars, all the, all the atrocities, all the hatred, all the evil, God has handed up to here and he's pouring out that cup of wrath on him, on him. That's what he was doing in the garden, asking, please don't make me drink that cup. But nevertheless, you can see the resignation and the determination on his face. Like he said, it's not what I want. It's what you want. And he called God Father. He was punished by God. Got, got punished by God. In the worst possible way. All the wickedness, all the evil is being returned many times over. He he was afflicted, the guide tells us. Look, he was pierced. And yes, now I can see there's piercing in his hands and piercing in his feet. What an ugly, ugly painting. But you can't help it. You have to get closer. I got closer and I saw the title of the painting. The name of the painting is Crushed for Our Iniquities. That's the name of the painting. Crushed for Our Iniquities. So that's what it is. Those wounds are for my healing. You can see it that he was oppressed and afflicted. Oppressed. Because he's caring all the oppression of all the people who have ever been oppressed, all the minorities, all the women, all the children who have ever in the history of man been oppressed. He's carried that feeling it. <sighs> but he's not complaining. You can see that he's looking at something far beyond. Something in his eyes says he's looking at, at something great, greater and richer. It's like a greater joy. The 
guy tells us, you know, he never did anything wrong. But yet he was killed. He was given a, an unfair trial. You know that they took him to that man in that painting. It's real. It's a real person. Although he did no wrong, they opened up the court at night, totally illegal, and they held a court, and they found him condemned. And even before that, they beat him half to death. And as if that wasn't enough, when they killed him, they put two of the most wicked men on the other side of him. They put him with the wicked, though he had done no violence. And you could see the honesty. There was no deceit in his mouth. But we have to walk away from it. We can't look upon it. How, I mean, people have been tortured. People have been had things that are so inhumane done on them. But this is God. I mean, this nobody can punish by, like God. There is no wrath like the wrath of God. And this is the full cup of the wrath upon this man. No wonder I thought he was ground beef. We have to walk away. We can't stay here. Let's look at the third painting on the other wall. Oh, this one's different. But I recognize him. I recognize him. This one is called The King. But I recognize him. I recognize that face. You know who it is? It's that same man that was at that dinner. The last dinner. Of course, when the people around him that were there with him had their last dinner, they didn't know that was their last dinner. But he did. The reason I know he did is because they were having their dinner. It took hours. It's called a Seder. He was Jewish. So they're having a Seder. And you, you know, there are there were there were you can see that there were uh, three uh, three empty cups there. Because at that dinner they serve four cups. And and then we read, we read in the book of Exodus in the Old Testament. We read. That's what the painting is describing. We read that there were four cups. Exodus chapter six says, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And that's called the cup of sanctification, separated from Egypt. That's what it says. And when people have Seder to this day, that, that's, that's what I mean. They ask, what is the first cup? And they'll say, I, it is because our God said, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the, of the Egyptians. It's called the cup of sanctification. And the second cup, we ask the guy, he says, oh, that, sense, that second empty cup, that's the cup of deliverance. Because it says in Exodus, I will rescue you from their bondage. I will deliver you from bondage. And it's called a cup of deliverance. That's the third cup of wine. There's a third, uh, that's the second cup of that. There's a third cup of wine that's empty. And we ask God, what is the third cup? And he tells us, it is because it says there in Exodus, I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. So it's called the cup of redemption. He redeemed his people. So it's called the cup of redemption. But this is that man at that dinner, this king, was I can recognize it's the same man that was at the dinner, but he didn't finish dinner. He turned around after the third cup and he says, I, I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my father's kingdom. He's waiting to finish the dinner. What's he waiting for? Well, he's the king now. He's the king. 
at this king. Okay, so this painting, it depends on where you stand. Because in this painting, he's the judge. This king is the judge. And if you stand on this side, he's the judge at an awards banquet. And he's giving out trophies and crowns and stars. We read in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, that it says, we must all, it's talking to us as believers, the followers of Jesus Christ, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body. It's an awards banquet. It's called the judgment seat of Christ. It's also called the marriage supper of the Lamb. And there is the judge handing out. It's a feast to end all feasts. I mean, some feasts go on for days, some for weeks. This one's going on for years. He is so happy. He is rejoicing because what's he got in his hand? He's got the fourth cup. The fourth cup, the one he left back there at the unfinished dinner. He's drinking it now. The cup of joy. The cup of joy. Because it says, I will take you as my people. <laughs> and he is rejoicing. He promised us. This man promised us. Didn't he not, he say, in my father's house are many mansions. I'm going away to prepare a place that where I am, you may be also. And if I go, I will come again and I will take you. Wow. <laughs> what a man. But, hmm, if you stand on the other side and look at that painting, that portrait, that same judge, that king judge, looks different. He's not happy. And there is silence. You can see that even the earth and the skies, the heavens, are fleeing. They're running away to get away from him. And he's seated on a great white throne. There's a description. Let's read the inscription. It says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it. It's talking about this, this judge in this painting. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And then I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. You mean everything that people ever do is recorded? That's what it says. That's true. What about those that were buried at sea? It says, the sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and hell gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what they had done. Who are these people? These are the people whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, in the Book of Life. They never recognized that man on the cross in the second painting. They never recognized them as Lord and King. But they are now. Because it says death and Hades are being thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. People die, but they'll be resurrected to stand before the white throne. And anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. That's the judge. We walk out of there with a very somber countenance. Our thoughts are deep. Because we're saying, on which side do I stand? Do I stand on this side and see that judge at the awards banquet rejoicing, eating and drinking and having fellowship with all, the, all his followers? Or do we see him from this angle as the judge, the final judge who is casting people, 
Yes, casting people into the lake of fire. He drank the cup of God's wrath so that nobody would have to do that. But a lot of people standing on this side have decided, no, that's fine. I'll have my fun and I'll drink the cup myself. Is that foolish or what? Is that foolish or what? That ends our tour. But we really can't end unless I ask you, which side are you standing on? Do you see him as Lord and King and Savior and your Heavenly Father? Or do you stand on this side and see him as your eternal judge, destining you to hell and worse than that, the lake of fire forever and ever? But you know what? We can make a decision which side of the painting we're going to look at. I invite you. Stand on the left side where you can see the goodness of, of this baby, this man, this king. Can I pray for you that you will go from the wrong side over to the right side and see him as your Lord and your master? What a portrait. What a painter Isaiah was. I mean, it comes alive. As a matter of fact, it is alive. It comes from the Word of God, which is alive. So what do we say? Repent. Accept Him as Lord and King and Savior. And He will tell you, Well done, good and faithful servant. Come into the banquet. Why go to the other one? Why stand on the other side? And see him as your judge. Let me pray for you. Lord, I pray right now that anyone who watches this or listens to it would accept you as Lord and Savior. And I pray the prayer that they need to pray. Lord, I come to you as a sinner and I ask you to forgive me. I believe that you, that baby, that man, that king, is God and my Savior, and I accept you. And because I proclaim you as my Savior, my Lord, my King, the eraser of all my sins, I am a new man, I'm a child of God, and if I were to die today, I know I would stand on the correct side and see you as my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer, my Liberator. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We're so grateful. Do me a favor. Send me a comment. Write a comment and tell me that you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or that you rededicated your life because you're wandering away. You're wandering over to the wrong side of the portrait. I want to hear from you. I really do. And further, would you share this with other people? Join me. I'm trying to reach the world. Not to get famous or, or sell anything. The way the world is going, I want to see people saved and redeemed. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. And I'll see you again next week.